It's Anthony Ramos from GLAAD. How are you? Hi. Uh, Rada, Hi, Anthony. Uh, Hi, uh, Peter. Nice to meet you both. Rada, I want to start with you because, you know, thinking about the journey of this project, Sundance, and now to Netflix, but I want to talk about you produce, I mean, you, you did it all, director, producer, star, writer, but you did produce this with Lena Waithe, who's someone basically in the GLAAD family who does amazing work. What was it like to collaborate with Lena on this project? It was a dream, honestly. Uh, we'd known each other for a number of years. Uh, we were part of the same um, Black woman TV writing group, um, which, you know, kind of support, uh, provided support to each other in an industry that wasn't always kind to us. And um, I'd known her from there. And it just took me a couple of while, a, a couple of years to kind of say yes to her request to support the film. And once I did, you know, it was at Sundance in 2019, she and Rishi Rajani, who runs filming grad productions for her, they went down the hill running um, to, to seek financing for the film. Um, but I always say that uh, two of the best things that Lena did for me as a producer is she, first she trusted me with my own vision and then she got out of my way. <laughs> she knew, she trusted that I knew what it is I wanted to say and, uh, and gave me the space to do it. So she wasn't, you know, I think sometimes first time filmmakers are afraid of like, losing control or being at the behest of the producers. It wasn't that kind of environment at all. It was very supportive, very understanding and very trusting. And that's almost like one of the themes that, that is covered in the film about kind of the writer losing control and then losing basically the entire, you know, idea of what, of what they were trying to accomplish in the first place. Absolutely. I mean, life imitate art, imitates, you know, life and, um, it, it, it's been this kind of cycle uh, of an experience that I'm now kind of living in real life, um, just in terms of like finally taking back my voice as a storyteller and aligning myself like my character with people who, you know, can get behind me fearlessly, you know, and it, and it, it took a gay black woman and a gay black man <laughs> to get behind me. And I think it's because, you know, <laughs> they understand what it's like to be on the fringes or to be overlooked or to be marginalized. And so when it came to getting behind my film, there wasn't a big question about this risky project. You know, it was something that they saw themselves in and decided to give a very affirmative yes to. So, you know, I think it speaks to really um, the leadership in the LGBT community and, you know, because there's been um, a lot of adversity. It feels like my producers were like, you're not gonna go through that experience with us. We're gonna get behind you because we know what it's like to be slept on and overlooked. And so it was one of the most pleasant experiences of my life. And I feel like it will set the tone for how I go forward in my career. We'll leave it to the LGBTQ people to get things done, right? Okay, <laughs> shit. Um, Peter, I feel like it's a good time to hop over to you. Um, sure. I can't tell you how excited I am to see a gay Asian character in a leading role. Um, me too. Right? So tell me <laughs> about you, that. That's yeah. Me. yeah, it's about <laughs> time. What does it mean for you? You know, you've been in this biz a long time, you know, um, lots of amazing roles, but to finally, I feel like, you know, movie, Netflix, leading role, gay Asian character, all of the boxes. I mean, it really feels like a dream to me, like this whole experience. Uh, Rada and I have known each other for, I guess, almost a decade now. And, you know, the this part is so special to me because Rada gave me a lot of space to advocate for him and to bring a lot of my own personal experience as a gay Korean American man um, to this role. And um, I think to date, not only is it, you know, the largest role that I've ever had. It's also the most personal and meaningful to me. Um, mm. there's, a, there's a scene, I don't wanna give too much away, but there's a scene where our characters basically get into this, you know, uh, kind of like a, a breakup in a way. And um, I get to say some things in that scene that 
um, it's taken me, Peter, a very long time to be able to say and fully mean. Um, so I feel like Archie, the character really taught me a lot. Um, he is just someone who's so much braver and more outspoken and confident than I am. And so it was a real, it was a real honor to step into his shoes. Well, his very expensive shoes. Yeah, <laughs> very expensive shoes. You know, I had to think about when you just said that I instantly flashed back to your role in Sex in the City. <laughs> sure, yeah. Some other expensive <laughs> shoes. If I could just yeah, say really I mean, quickly, um, Anthony, yes. what a gift Peter was to the film, um, you know, the which it was a web series many years ago. And in that iteration, Archie as a character was a like a newbie agent, white, skinny guy. Uh, you also are skinny, Peter. I want to make sure <laughs> Thank you. I make that distinction. Thanks. But he definitely wasn't a, a, a gay Korean man who was my age. And Peter and I had, like he said, had done some work together in theater. And he was at, sometimes acting as a dramaturg, as a, a, a dialect coach. And it was a moment in, in this work that I was doing where he was so honest with me that it was so so refreshing to get that from him. And that's when I was like, I think Archie is a different character. And by Peter stepping into the role, now the narrative is not about this woman who's turning 40 and her 20 something year old white uh, agent. It's about someone who we started in the same place and as we're both approaching 40, have different ideas of success. And that is what kind of creates a, a little rupture in their friendship. You know, like when you've been in this space together as innocents and then you become adults and your perspective of the world changes, there's always a question of whether or not the relationship will survive. Um, a lot of people, they don't mean to do this, but I think they tend to focus on my relationship with D, that romantic relationship, but really it's a woman who is having a relationship with these two people who not only represent, um, you know, different artistic institutions, hip hop and theater, but they also represent different parts of herself. D being her heart and Archie being more of her head and what's practical. And so they both kind of create a mirror for her. Um, and when they have that explosive moment at the end, it was something that's probably been a long time coming in their relationship. But that is the breakup scene, not the scene between her and her young lover, is the scene with Archie where she's experiencing uh, a breakup. A hundred percent. And um, that's, I, it is really the, the two of you, it's about your relationship. Um, what, you know, what do you want people, because, you know, it is something about, you know, the 40 year old version. What do you, you know, Rada, what do you want people that see this to, you know, after it's over, what do you want them to, to feel inspired to do? What do you, what do you want them to take away? I just hope that they're reminded that, you know, there isn't an expiration date on passion or purpose. Like you can at any time, any age, um, have us have a moment of self-discovery and go deeper inside when we were at salt lake we did a screening and this man in his 60s came up to me afterwards and he kind of had his eyes were a little watery and he was like thank you for the film it was the shot in the arm that i needed and his wife soon after came up and they both were just so sweet saying thank you like this film makes us want to go back and explore some of our dreams and then they walked off hand in hand and they probably made some sweet 60 year old love that night. Um, and I like to feel good that I, you know, I have people kind of dusting off their loins, you know? Um, so I feel like that's part of my purpose, but seriously, I feel like I'm hoping people um, dust off that manuscript, um, you know, explore their, that passion for personal massage. I don't know, um, but like whatever it is that they've been kind of suppressing because they fear they're too old to do something. I'm starting a career in, in, as a filmmaker in my 40s. So if that's not a testament to giving yourself a chance to have a new path, then I don't know what is. Um, yeah, Peter, before we run out of time, I want to tell you, know, this is a, such a big moment for you in your career. What has this whole experience inspired you to do? And maybe just, you know, when it comes to your career or what do you want to happen next, I guess is a good question. 
I mean, it's a, it's, thank you for asking that question. Um, no one's asked me that so far. I, I, <laughs> I, I mentioned this, I mentioned the Serata like uh, not too long ago, but I'm actually really excited about um, producing for film and television to step into that role. I, I've been producing off-Broadway theater for a number of years now. And I'm just finding that um, the importance of telling stories by Asian Americans is so important right now. Um, and it, 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 it aligns everything, aligns with what's happening with the BLM movement. Um, it's all about representation and getting a more diverse um, storytellers um, out there. So, and, and of course, yes, I would love like some more amazing roles like, uh, like this one that like Rada created for me. But um, interestingly, yeah, I'm really excited about producing. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to both of you. The film's fantastic. Um, I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Have Anthony. A